Grace Rodriguez. I'm she's full of grace. Her name is Grace and she's full of grace. Um, and I'm a real estate in Melbourne, living in Melbourne. Um, like everyone else, brought up as a, um, a you know, a practicing Catholic. Um, my mom had great faith. My mom passed uh, early this year in, in January. January um, and she passed it on to us. But, you know, as, as usual, it was just praise and religiously praying and going to the novenas and everything. Um, till I met Brother Johnson in 2017. Um, Sister Roshni, so she introduced me and she, that year in 2017, she said, you have to come and meet Brother Johnson. Um, that's you know. me, that's me, hello. <laughs> hello, she's talking about me, hello. Um, hello, can you hear me? Yes, yeah, yes. she's talking about me, yeah. And I said, Brother Johnson is not a priest, he's a layman, no, I won't come. <laughs> Sorry, brother. <laughs> um, and she said, sister, please just come once and listen. You've got so many problems. You've got so many worries. You've got so many fears. Come and listen to the word of God once. My first encounter with Brother Johnson was at um, a divine retreat center at Keysborough. Um, we came in there on a Good Friday um, and we said, you know, there was oh, the Good Monica Friday. Monica Day. Yes, Monica Day. Monica wow. Day, correct. We came there on Good Friday, and the service was still going on inside, and we, do, we didn't know anybody. We didn't know what Brother Johnson looked like, or whoever looked like, and my I, I first encounter was Jai. Jai came up, and I said, is there a service here by Brother Johnson? And he said, yes. Um, and he said, just wait, 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 I need that, you know, in whispers. And I'm thinking, what's happening here? You know, and then I met Lawrence, he came in. And, and I said, again, I asked him, um, is there a service here? And in Konkani, he said, you know, it'll start very soon. And then um, we didn't know still who Brother Johnson was. And then Brother Johnson appeared, and I told my husband, we met my husband, he's not here today, and I said, is that Brother Johnson? He looks like a gunda, how can he be praised? <laughs> like one of the gangster, like one of the mafia. <laughs> you know, the best part is uh, people look at the outer appearance, but my God looks at the heart. Yeah. So, so when your heart is decorated, you don't need any decoration on the dust of the earth. <laughs> and there are so many people spending thousands of dollars to decorate the dust of the earth. <laughs> no more description about me. I promise. <laughs> and then I told my husband, it's Good Friday, let's go home. I don't think I want to listen. But then this lady called Monica walked in with a, um, the oxygen cylinder in her hand. And in a trolley. trolley. In a, on a trolley, sorry, on a trolley. And we were standing next right to, uh, right to her, and uh, standing next to her. And Brother Johnson asked her this question, do you want to go home without that oxygen cylinder? And she said, yes. And we followed him in that little room on the side. You were there? Yeah. On the first visit? Yeah. And that's what, that's what I said, wow. You know, and that was a real wow effect for me. And then we went inside the No, tell the them what happened. Uh, this, uh, uh, this lady was walking with an oxygen cylinder, um, you know, for a breathing because she was finding it uh, impossible to breathe. And for many years? And for, I think, for about a few years, about 18, Anybody remembering 18 20 years. 20, 20 years, years. Yeah, okay, 20, 20 years. years. Yeah, 20, 20 years. years. And then she was so happy when Brother Johnson said to her, saying, yes, she, she was full of joy and so much confidence. And Brother Joyce... So, so Monica started walking. And she started a little running. And she said, I can breathe freely. I'm not breathless. And that was the hug that she gave me. And she did she not realize. you. Yeah, she did not realize yeah. in the happiness, she was actually squeezing my ribs and I became breathless. Yeah. <laughs> and I could tell her, please, hold on. You're squeezing me so 
so tight. Mm. You remember that? Because she did not. I'm not joking. Yeah. That actually happened because for the first time after 20 years she was breathing, and she thought I'm a gunda. I'm gunda for Christ. Kill that infirmity that was making her breathless. That's what I'm gunda for Christ. Christ. <laughs> That's why when people ask me, are you RC? <laughs> Roman Catholic. <laughs> I am saying I am RC. <laughs> what does that mean? Rowdy for Christ. <laughs> Hallelujah. Okay, then what happened? Okay, then we sat down and we listened to Brother Johnson's preaching and is every word that came from his mouth was like piercing. You know, like I knew the Bible, I read the Bible. But the, you know, what it meant to me, what the words meant to me was, you know, something touching, honestly. Um, so um, then I started, you know, uh, at those days, it was different. You didn't have all the recorded ones. It only started after the Zoom in Melbourne and all that. Uh, wherever I could, uh, you know, whenever I was wait for Brother Johnson to come the next year and then year after year after, but I would listen and listen. My worries were overtaking me. I, would not, I did not change, there was no change in me, no change in my heart, all the, the worries and because we, I had, we had a very, very big financial debt and close to two million, it's really big. And all my worries was how would I make the payment because I was a travel agent then and you know, it was the money, just me and my husband working and it wasn't enough and we would rob Peter to pay Paul. Rob Peter to pay Paul. Take what money. Is <laughs> <laughs> Means take, you know, shift money from one account to the other to pay uh, the mortgage. So you say rob. Rob Peter to, Peter to pay Paul. <laughs> <laughs> No? Okay. Please don't listen to this word, okay? Rob, Peter and... Not anymore, not anymore, not anymore. Please don't use this. Which, which meant not, not robbing someone else, taking money from one, shifting money from accounts to accounts to, so I could pay my mortgage in time. Oh. My own money, not anybody's money, but from different accounts. <laughs> I still don't get it. Okay. Okay. <laughs> All right. And then, and then um, the COVID hit, and we, uh, luckily before that, uh, the, God uh, above. Uh, do you agree with luckily? Uh, do you agree with luckily? Yes. There's no word luckily by the grace of God. By the grace of God. <laughs> and whatever I have done in the past, whatever I've made bad investments, whatever I've done. So I, you know, the devil always used scriptures to tempt me because I would use scriptures from the Bible and would pray, I want to buy this investment, I'm doing it for my children, I'm doing it and the scriptures would come, especially my favorite scripture was, uh, uh, you know, how Jesus, his first miracle, Jesus turned water into wine and I said, Jesus, you have turned water into wine. It, you know, everything is possible for you. I want that investment without thinking I was going deeper in debts and deeper and deeper in debts. And I didn't know what to do. Then God above has always, always been, he's such a faithful God, he's always picked me up. However, wherever I've been, and I don't know how, you know, he also knew that COVID would hit and that I should change my job and I became a real estate agent. Thank goodness for that because during COVID, all the real estate agents were shut and you know, not the real, sorry, the travel agencies were shut because no one could fly, planes couldn't fly. And as you know, there was, uh, the, the, there was no future for travel agency, but I was put in a, in a right place. Then the Zoom of, in Melbourne happened, in the Melbourne breakfast. And I religiously, religiously got onto that every morning we would hear. So you came for online breakfast? Yes, every morning. We were one of the pioneer people right from the beginning. We started 15 minutes before you came on the scene and then you took over, but it was a good over. <laughs> Those who don't know, Linus invited me as a guest for breakfast. And he said 15 minutes only. By the time I explained the meaning of one word, he said, brother, your time is out. <laughs> and that made me furious because on Zoom, it is not physical location. No, he said, we all want to go to work. I said, you can go to work. 
That's why please don't call me as a guest as so. Because when I come in, don't give me 15 minutes. I'll go wild. <laughs> Hallelujah. What started with 15 minutes ended up with three hours. And they, can you see this product of <laughs> breakfast? Absolutely. Absolutely. What if I had to give only 15 minutes, you wouldn't have been here? I remember the heated half argument you and my brother Linus had. That. Online. <laughs> Online. Everyone heard it, I'm sure. But, but, but one thing about Linus is... <laughs> is beautiful. Linus he has got heart. no switch called offense. Yes. He's, he's got a... Manufacturing defect. I agree. When, when God was manufacturing, he forgot to put that button. Yes. You know, when God was manufacturing, he forgot one button in Linus. What? Offense. Offense. You tell him anything, hey, brother, praise the Lord, brother, brother, praise the Lord, brother, <laughs> brother, praise the Lord, brother. <laughs> he has a heart of gold. Yes, I agree. <laughs> now, then I really, you know, got into the, word, the teaching, the word of God. Um, and also understanding, um, give and it shall be given unto you. That was the first time I understood because before then, my husband used to always say, look, we have to give to a charity, you have to give donation, you have to, and I used to always tell him, if we don't have enough, how can we give to someone else? You know, and if there's anything left over after paying all the bills, because, you know, I pay all the bills and all that, and say, if I left over, then I'll put it in the church. But, but, but if I, we don't have, how can we give? Till I heard one, one of your teachings, which says, Malachi um, 310, you know, first you give unto to God everything, whatever we have given, first you give unto God. And that was a time I started this. Every time any commission or salary hit our accounts, the first thing I did was 10% of it went into another account. And uh, Again, you know, Peter and Paul? No, this time it wasn't Peter and Paul. This was giving back to God. But, I am understanding what you are trying to say. I, I, I gave it to Peter. And got it from, back from Paul. <laughs> Okay, go ahead, go ahead. And I put, uh, before I could even even think, I said, thank you, Jesus, this is coming to our account. It's from you, Lord, and it is for you. I should do the 10%, put it in another account. And that first week, first week where in, in COVID, where we couldn't sell, where we couldn't, where people lost jobs. That first week, I went to work and my boss said, Grace, I have good, and, good news and bad news. Uh, the person who, who you are working as a personal assistant cannot afford to keep you anymore because there are no, um, there's no business. But because you're such a good worker, we can't let you go. You are now working for the managing director. And I said, wow, even better. I got a promotion straight away. And that first week, we listed and sold three properties which you could not do in COVID. So from there on, it was no comeback. I still do the, um, you know, whatever comes, I, you know, the charity, whatever, it, it goes out. And Malachi 3.10 is so important. You, God gives it to us. Everything we get is from God. And we have to honor and give him whatever first before we think about anything else. Yes, um, sorry, yeah, I forgot about that. The e-writing helped me during COVID. It really, really helped me in a big way. And the e-writing meant when, when all the teachings were going on Zoom, that there were a few you know, people around the world who volunteered to do, to take the notes down from you know, all the teachings, write it down um, in what sick. What? Uh, you know, the teachings, all the teachings, it's which were word to word. Word, word to word teachings. So we could write it down and then send it back to, uh, to India, to Marina, was the Marina. And then she would, you know, put it in whatever form and she would send it out. So they were uploaded for everybody forever to, to hear the word of God, which is all on the, on the internet. I did the e-writing and even with the e-writing, I, I would say I've never have time, never have time, but I would get up at three o'clock in the morning, never feel tired doing it and wake up and do whatever I had to do, write, do the e-writing, go back to work and in the nighttime again, early morning Zoom and all that. 
Um, then, um, as we were uh, doing on Zoom, one I think I gave another um, uh, another testimony of how I had an issue with another colleague of mine, um, and I did, you know, because I was angry with the colleague, I didn't did, did not do the right thing which the Word of God said. And I came out in the open and I said to Brother Johnson, Brother Johnson, this is what I've done, you know, in the testimony on the Melbourne breakfast, this is something wrong I'm doing. Um, I'm holding back because for me, a little bit of envy is coming into me. I'm not teaching what I'm not supposed to be teaching. I realized that I've done something wrong. And um, that was the day Brother Johnson said, look, you, no one would have come out in the open like you have. You have done it and you know, and this has helped so many people around the world and it has because I, I was getting calls from people to say how brave I was to have come and said it. And that was the day Brother Johnson invited me to be a warrior and that's what I am until today. Warrior for Christ. Thank you. Thank you, Brother. Thank you. Praise God. When you do an e-writing, e-writing is you listen to what has been preached and you write it down, word by word. Can a person write something that he has not heard? First you need to hear attentive. And when you give your full attention and you start writing, Praise God. That's when everything in your life begins to change. Now I gave good attention to her and she's sitting with my mic. Oh, oh, sorry. <laughs> E-writing or writing for your own self will always give great result because you can only write down word to word only when you pay attention to it. And that's why it helps you, because when you pay attention to the word and write it down, that word enters your heart. How many of you want good things to come into your life? Hey, what man? Do you want good things to manifest in your life? Okay, put Matthew 12.35 and let's see how does e-writing help you to get good things in your life? A good God, 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 a good man out of the good treasure of the heart brings forth good things. So when you are doing that e-writing, that word that you are writing has slowly but surely entered inside your inside your inside your and that good treasure in your heart when you open your mouth and use the treasure in your everyday life you will end up bringing forth good things manifested in your life amen, amen. and an evil person out of the evil treasure bring forth evil things what is the evil Whenever you speak anything that contradicts to God's word, God says it is an evil report. And that's what happened to the Israelites. The ten spies brought evil report. And they gave it to the whole congregation. And they believed the evil report. And the whole congregation, even though God brought them out of Egypt, they still remembered Egypt. And they went into the wilderness for 40 years and none of them about the age of 20 could make it to the promised land. And the reason is they believed an evil report. So the next time you open your mouth and you speak words, better check whether those words are in line with the word of God then good treasure will manifest in your life. But if out of your mouth comes words that contradicts to God's word, now you are the person who is giving legal right to the kingdom of darkness to come and destroy your life. Words coming out of your mouth decide your future. Whether you will build up your life in abundance or you will build up your life in total self-destruction. 
and that is why the devil is always going to use your five senses today when we were coming uh, we came by express road last night also we were going by express road and when you took an exit i said that means the house is closed now do you have an express road what do you call a metro road what do you call it freeway and the other one is payway so which one is faster freeway or highway oh one is without money and one is with money but but there is a freeway or a highway whichever way it goes at a high speed because the tracks are more but when you go through the inside road the tracks are less in the same way for us who are christian there are two ways one is the way of your five senses called sight and the other one is a way called faith which is all the time connected to things unseen so you can be a person who is talking about things seen then you are on a danger zone and you can also be a person who can see the things but still keeps talking the unseen things you are on god's highway as long as you are speaking things which are seen which does not contradict to god's word you are on a safe zone but the moment you shift anything contradicting to god's word you are on a very danger zone called self destruction and that's why satan puts pressure on your five senses so that he can get the words out of your mouth remember you are created in the likeness and image of god only man not even the angels satan used to be an angel lucifer but when he rebelled against god he became satan and he still does not have the power to speak words he knows man has the power to speak words your words can create and your words can destroy so he uses man's thinking to put pressure and uses man's imagination that man will open his mouth and speak words negative to his own self that's why you are under pressure what is worry worry is nothing but you are on a danger zone give me matthew 6:31 therefore therefore take no thought therefore take no thought therefore take no thought saying what when you go to church that morning do you have these questions hello this morning when you came here did you have this question what shall i eat what shall i drink what shall i <laughs> hello do you have questions like this then he says when you have got this questions of worry shut your mouth don't open your mouth and that's why he says take no thought say if those thoughts are there in your mind don't open your mouth keeping your mouth shut is more powerful than you opening your mouth and speaking your worry how many times it happened in your life when the holy spirit said keep your mouth shut and you told the holy spirit just move out of the way i can handle it <laughs> just move i can handle it and you opened your mouth and what came after that you know now when the news came to jairus that his daughter is dead the servant told jairus your daughter is dead and what did jesus do let's go there mark 5 i don't know what is the scripture might be 30 and yet while he yet spoke they came from the ruler of the city house certain which said your daughter is dead why trouble you the master any further then as soon as jesus heard 
the word that was spoken he said unto the ruler Jairus of the synagogue be not afraid only believe as soon as as soon as as soon as as soon as some bible say this just give me a different translations please but overhearing selective selective hearing hello hello overhearing then some other translation jesus not heeding some more translation there are there are disregard is there paying no attention is there you don't have any more translation but there are many translation in some translation jesus paid no attention to the word jesus disregarded the message praise god now how many of us disregard the message that is running in your mind and when the message was given to jairus jairus is supposed to open his mouth and jesus says jairus do not be afraid because what news you got will bring fear just continue to believe and when jesus said those words he said hey jairus what you heard when you came and met me on the beach you said something you said come to my house lay your hand on my daughter who is at the point of death and pray over her and she will live you said she will live and now the news came she's dead don't you open your mouth and say she's dead it's the end of your miracle keep your mouth shut after that do you see jairus opening his mouth mm -hmm. let's see whether jairus opened his mouth keep going fast and he suffered no man to follow him save peter james and john the brother of james now when jesus when the servant came and told jairus he spoke so loudly the news ran in the crowd and now everybody saying his daughter is dead his daughter is dead his daughter is dead his daughter is dead can fear be contagious hello can fear be infectious yes have you ever had something infection like that And, and and some people are experts and champions in giving bad messages uh, all the bad news when you open the chat it's full of bad news and they feel that they are christians hallelujah hallelujah during covid time one or two people send the message to me about covid i said whom are you working for i did not know when you shifted your kingdom and you got into the kingdom of the devil after that the person was very careful not to send to me if you are a dustbin people will send you all the garbage and you don't tell them they will continue to send all the garbage and when you are reading it you don't even know that garbage is affecting you and and jesus came to the house of the ruler of the synagogue and saw that you see i i've got a lot of problems okay i can't read big words and thank god i can't read big words that's why i don't preach big words <laughs> and yet i'm a i'm a english teacher for many who don't know english <laughs> hallelujah and them that wept and wailed greatly so when jesus came there he told them this girl is why are you crying this girl is is sleeping and they made fun of him and then what happened and they laughed him to scorn and when he had put them all out and all those who were laughing jesus put them all out imagine jairus's house the relatives have come because the baby is at the point of death and all the relatives are there and jesus walks in and tells you 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 please go out of the house imagine he goes to jairus's house and jairus is What do you think the relatives will be telling Jairus? Jesus put them all out. He taken the father and the mother of the damsel, uh, damsel, and them that were with him, and entered in where the damsel was lying. And he took the girl by the hand and said unto her, "Talitha kumi," which is being interpreted, "Little girl, I say to you, arise." Now in all this time did Jairus open his mouth How many times in your life when you spoke your faith 
and then things did not happen the way you thought and things went crazy against you did you open your mouth or did you keep your mouth shut and when you opened your mouth you spoke your faith praise god you spoke your faith of what is going on in your bheja <coughs> bheja is brain in your mind what is going on in your mind the good stuff or the fearful stuff can you look at your neighbor's eyes and tell your neighbor if you can't say, speak faith shut your mouth <laughs> shut your mouth <laughs> tell your neighbor did you see jairus shut his mouth you also shut your mouth because when you shut your mouth there is more power than you opening your mouth and speaking your fear so the next time some battle begins <laughs> and might be the spouse will say what you are keeping your mouth shut open your mouth hmm? <laughs> can't open your mouth hmm? <laughs> you chicken can you open your mouth hmm? <laughs> come on open it hmm? in our lives do situations instigate us to open our mouth and did you ever think that words have power and you opened your mouth and fire came out of your mouth <laughs> you thought you were going to burn the opposite person and you got burned <laughs> with the fire coming out of your own mouth praise god now did jesus say that the girl is dead or the girl is sleeping what would we say So most of the time do we speak facts or do we speak the desires the truth When you open your mouth and you speak facts you are already giving Satan a legal right and his words coming out of your mouth to perform against you Can we learn the system of the kingdom of heaven Hello Yes sir Do you know your greatest weapon is your tongue and the words coming out of your mouth and if you load it with imagination to what God has given you his word in no time you can change every physical thing that is coming against you so please write down my rewards in life my rewards in life are determined my rewards in life are determined by the problems by the problems i solve do you go to work hello do you go to work why do you think they gave you a job huh because you look smart huh you look dashing huh you got a certificate huh you got the ability huh then why during covid they sent you home <laughs> the reason they sent you home because they had no problem and when they don't have problem why should they keep you they keep you only for a reason that you are saying i am willing to solve your problem in exchange you reward me with a salary and what's the difference between a salary and a business salary is saying whether the problems are there or not there you give me fixed income i will be there to solve your problem but when it comes to business the person is saying only when i solve your problem and satisfy you then only you pay me others you don't pay me now in the 24 hours that god has given you which is your currency where do you use your currency every day to solve problems for others or trying to solve your own problem So when you go to office you are sitting in the office and trying to solve your problem and they give you a salary right ha huh? when you are in the office whose whose problem are you solving of the company in exchange what are they giving you so how do you get reward in your life hello how will you get reward for in your life every day 
by see people will remember you for two things one for the problems you solve and two for the problems you create <laughs> can you look at your neighbor and ask your neighbor which one are you <laughs> person saying i've got both qualities <laughs> hallelujah so in the 24 hours that god has given you are you using your currency to solve as many problems as you can for somebody else so what do you say every day lord i thank you for giving me some opportunity of people having problems around me because those problems are introducing me that god has opened a challenge uh, a channel for me to be rewarded so are you all the time looking out for people with problems see if you understand the system of the kingdom of god when you use god's system 100% guarantee victory is yours because the devil has no weapon greater than the weapon of god the weapons that we use are not carnal but spiritual and they are mighty to destroy strongholds and bring victory amen, amen. so now when you use the tools of heaven satan is checkmate now what am i doing I'm showing you the weapons of heaven and you are writing down those points and now when you're going home you are mugging it up practicing and putting it to test and practicing and practicing when I meet you again you will be saying hey brother what you gave me those truths I applied it and it was checkmate for the devil and here I am victorious Amen. Hallelujah Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So if somebody tells me what do you do every day? I solve problems. And how do you solve problems? By preaching and teaching. Why do you think Jesus said, "Go preach and teach the gospel to the ends of the earth?" Because when you're preaching and teaching, it has the power to lead you to repentance. And the kingdom of heaven can be experienced by anybody through repentance. and repentance means change of thinking and what you are doing right now sitting and listening attentively to the word you are beginning to realize your mistake and you are saying oh my god i need to make corrections and when you make those corrections that correction that proportion to which you made the correction is the proportion to which you will experience reward coming from heaven so every day what is the proportion to which you have changed by listening to the word of god people who listen and make extreme correction in their life in no time will be on a super speed experiencing reward after reward supernaturally and there are people who will be there for the last 20 years and after the preaching when you talk to them they still speak what they were speaking before they came in there's no repentance and when there's no repentance the person does not experience the kingdom of heaven right on problems are introductions problems are brother ryan please can you write down problems are introductions to a reward system problems are introduction to a reward system the next time you face a problem get excited because god is introducing you to a new system by which when you use the tools of heaven you are going to experience reward so from now on when you face a problem will you be a victim or a victor mindset let me give an example how many of you learn bicycle how many of you know uh, cycling nobody praise god not even from india they know you know cycling how many times did you fall many times in how many days did you will learn few days okay uh, do you cycle with one hand no two hands never left one hand and tried praise god <laughs> <laughs> she did not even leave one and we leave two hands and cycle 
Have you ever taken double seat? Now she's not even looking at me. Have you taken double seat? Front or behind? Behind. And if there is a heavy person like me, and, and the person who is behind can control the driver, do you know that? If I lean this side, your handle goes this side. If I lean this side, your handle goes this side. And if I'm shaking, your handle is also going like this. <laughs> Hallelujah. Have you tried the triple seat? Anybody taken triple seat? One in front and one behind? Ricardo, tri triple seat? Uh, four seat, one on the handle. <laughs> Now, now, all these things a person will do because he's not satisfied. He wants more and more adventure. He wants more and more thrill. In the same way, when a person understands that when I use the gospel of Christ every day, in every situation of my life, you get the thrill of getting into a fight. Fight against whom? Against the kingdom of darkness. And the more and more you are learning the system of the kingdom of God, the devil can sense that this person, if I don't stop him, this fellow will be a great threat. And what the devil means for evil, you use the same by learning the system of the kingdom of heaven and apply it in your life and now you are getting victory. Anybody ever watch cricket? Hello, cricket, cricket? Yes. Cricket? When I was small, we had a player called Kapil Dev. Anybody remembering? Yes. When a bouncer would come to Kapil Dev, what would happen to that ball? It's gone for a six. And if the same ball comes to Sunil Gavaskar, what happens? He goes down. <laughs> See, two players facing the same delivery, but one is an expert in that particular delivery, the other one is ducking. If Shastri is playing and if the ball is put on his leg, it will surely go for a four. The other one will be struggling because he will be trying to save his leg. So each one is an expert of strokes. In the same way, the Bible is full of different strokes. And when you start taking those, those uh, truths and applying them, you become stronger and stronger in those strokes. So the next time that, that particular ball is bowled, you are not worried, you are excited because you know the victory is yours. Wow. I, 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 I are understanding. So the battles are actually helping you to grow stronger. Has anybody ever been to a gym? Amalraj, gym? Yes. You went and picked up the dumbbell. And might be there was a, another champion over there with, the, with, with his arms like your legs. Okay, and he's picking up the heavy one and yours is the first day. And you looked at him and said, Are, even I can do it and you picked up. <laughs> and you forced yourself. What happened the next day? <laughs> the hand in your brain are not working together <laughs> hallelujah does that mean you will stay that way when a person is picking up the dumbbell he is purposely putting pressure on his arm and when he's putting pressure on his arm the cells under pressure they die and when they die, they are replaced with new cells and that's how your muscle starts growing. How many of you have seen me and Linus and me punching Linus in his stomach? <laughs> but how many of you saw me punching my brother Lawrence in his stomach? And hard punches. You want to see? Lawrence, can you come here please? <laughs> it's been a long time, I have not used my arms. <laughs> Lawrence, can you come here? Huh? Uh, even, after, even when he's having lunch, I can use him. Uh, yeah, please come. And, and anybody can come and give a try, okay? It's all open. Yeah, please stand here. 
and it is open. Any lady also can come and punch him. <laughs> and all on his stomach. Watch him. Put your hands up. No putting your hands down. Watch it. Did he shake? Did he shake? Hello, did he shake? Why not? Because he has practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced and practiced. And, practiced. and that's why. Did it affect him? Now it is his turn. <laughs> Hallelujah. The reason is he has practiced and become a black belt. And even I've worn a black belt. <laughs> but his black belt is different. He has got a brown belt, but I've got a black belt. Praise God. Why I called him is to show you Why I called him is to show you when a person has practiced, he can take all those punches and nothing happens. In the same way, when the devil is coming with his best shot and you are using the word of God, you are practicing by using the weapons of heaven. Now every carnal thought will be brought into obedience to Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. Come on. Hey, you, you want me to try for Brother Malraj? What about, uh, what about uh, John? <laughs> Brother John, where are you? He's not here. He's not here. <laughs> if Brother John is there, we'll have to keep an ambulance out. <laughs> Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Are you understanding? Come on. Yes. See, see, in the, in the physical realm, uh, the, the, how many of you have heard Eliston speak? Yes. Our, our, our 11 year old Eliston? Yes. Okay. Now, if you look at that boy and he's speaking the word, the person will say, oh, he's just a boy. But because he has been practicing and practicing, when he came to Goa and he saw a person on a wheelchair, as he was preaching, he told him, Stand up in the name of Jesus. And the man could not stand up. He went home, came the next day, again he preached. The third day again he preached. And the fourth day again he preached. And the fourth day he said, stand up on your feet. And the man stood up. In the spirit realm, it is not your outer appearance. You can look like a gunda. <laughs> When you have the word of God in you, all that comes out of you is love. And remember, Satan cannot stand love. And God has poured love in you. And when you start practicing love and love and love and forgiveness and using the tools of heaven, in no time you become a champion. And you heard that girl speak during the promo? If you use the word once in a Sunday, once a year, but if you use it every day, you become a champion. And then she says, when you use the word and you look at whether it has happened, it will never happen, she says. Why? Unless you believe in the spirit, it has already happened. That same girl used to be a failure. That same girl used to be a sick girl. The same girl whose IQ was so low. And the same girl now going from place to place to preach the gospel. Anybody from Malaysia? Anybody from Malaysia? Hello, Malaysia, Malaysia. She comes to your country to preach to the doctor's conference. Anybody from Sri Lanka? She comes to Sri Lanka to preach to the doctor's conference. What I'm trying to say is when you practice the word of God, the Lord changes your whole identity. He changes your whole ability. He changes you from inside out. And now you are operating in the supernatural. Praise God. So the next time you see the problem, are you supposed to be excited? Or are you supposed to be like a victim? Come on, are you a victor or a victim? Touch your neighbor and ask your neighbor.
write down in capital letters write down in capital letters when i choose when i choose the problem when i choose the problem that i solve when i choose the problem that i solve i choose my salary i choose my salary for example a person at a railway station picks up the luggage on his head and helps you to take the luggage to your car and you pay him few dollars but there is a doctor who uses his knowledge to operate a person and he gets a salary in thousands and thousands of pounds or dollars so when you choose that i want to solve big problems that's when you choose big salary big reward so most of the time we like to choose uh, to we like to solve small easy problem or complicated problems many a times people say lord give me a promotion give me a promotion and you can't handle where you are if they give you a promotion you will not handle because when promotion comes the pressure also comes the responsibility also comes and now when you can't handle they will come to know that you committed suicide so many people end up doing that but they can't handle the stress when you can't handle stress on grade 2 and you're saying lord promote me to grade 5 because i want all the benefits of grade 5 with the benefit comes responsibility right on when i solve a problem when i solve a problem i prompt favor when i solve a problem i prompt favor wherever there is favor wherever there is favor there is supply example joseph solved the king's problem by interpreting the dream and there was a supply what was the supply he was out of the prison no no don't write i'm just giving you he was out of the prison and now he is the governor of egypt did he solve the problem so when does favor get activated hey when does favor get activated so are you a problem solver yes then favor is active and what favor can do for you your lifetime labor can't do even if I, even if joseph has to labor all his life can he ever get a promotion of a governor but when you are a problem solver your promotion is so big that favor gets activated and favor can do what lifetime labor can't do so are you the person who is all the time looking for problems to solve for others or are you all the time concerned about your own problems hey she said she is a registered agent the moment she solves somebody who wants to buy a house in exchange she gets a reward but if she is laboring and laboring and laboring and that person never bought that property she doesn't get a reward so every day what do you do to solve somebody's problem are you all the time focused on solving somebody else's problem are you all the time stretching your neck and saying who somebody come and solve my problem do you know why people don't receive right on we got to master right on we got to master the art of receiving people don't fail people don't fail in life people don't fail in life because they don't give they fail because they don't know how to receive and write down in capital letters how to receive 
रिसीव द ऑपरचुनिटी रिसीव द ऑपरचुनिटी टू सॉल्व अ प्रॉब्लम जॉयफुली लेट मी गिव अ टेस्ट मनी सो दैट यू अंडरस्टैंड ना वेन आई लॉस्ट एवरीथिंग आई डिड नॉट हैव द मनी एंड गॉड बिगैन टू ट्रेन मी इन इज वर्ड एंड आई बिगैन टू लर्न टू गिव प्रेस गॉड सो एट मंथ्स इन बॉम्बे आई वॉज लिविंग ऑन ऑमलेट पाव और वड़ा पाव एंड येस्टर डे ऑल्सो समबड़ी इज हाउस आई वेंट एंड दे वॉज वड़ा द फर्स्ट थिंग आई डू इज पिक अप दैट वड़ा बिकॉज इट्स रिमाइंड्स मी वेर आई यूज टू बी वंस अपॉन अ टाइम and even when i go to bombay the first thing i'll go on the street of bombay is go and pick up that and say god thank you this is where i started and now you have done such a marvelous thing in my life amen, amen. so i learned from the bible that god has given me his gifts he has given me his resources he has given me the biggest gift of all time as my currency and i have to use this to solve other people's problem but using the tools of heaven so i've been doing this for years and there was this man who came for the service with a kurta what do you say for kurta indian tunic yeah, tunic tunic indian tunic and indian pajamas <laughs> Sorry, what do you call? Pajamas, very very loose. Okay, you understood. Praise God. And he came for the service, and he was listening to the word of God. And listening to the teaching, he got hope in his hopeless condition, because he was already divorced. Eight years had gone by, and he was still believing for restoration of his family. So he heard the word, and he was not a Christian; he was a Hindu Brahmin. So he became my good friend, and we began to speak, and we began to uh, become friend. And one day, I was in his house. He was a rich man. He is a rich man. and i saw a clock in his house is this working yes sir but that one was not working it was dead and i looked at this clock and i said you might have so many workers but the clock is still dead and i can see your wife in this house and the clock is working Did you hear what I said? Yes. I can see your wife in this house, and the clock is working. He looked at me and he said, "What did you say?" I said, "I spoke my faith. Are you willing to agree?" And he agreed with me on that clock, and we made a prayer. and he would be studying the word of god day and night and there was one of his favorite when a man gets married they are one flesh man and a woman and what god has joined nothing can separate them and he would take his guitar and sing this hymn and make his own hymn and keep on singing praise god and it so happened that the wife and the children got restored and that watch is working now it happened after 3 years 3 years it took and and one day at breakfast my daughter called me up and said dad i want to go to us for higher studies so i said surely darling anyway i have closed down my business and those two factories are there one belongs to you one to the other daughter i'll send i'll i'll sell off that property and whatever money comes i'll hand it over to you and you can go and study so she said why are you selling the property why can't we speak in faith so i said okay tell me what's your faith she said i believe that god is going to sponsor me 
I said, praise God, let's pray. And we agreed at 7.30 at the breakfast table. She's in Bangalore, I'm here. And the person comes to me and says, how many children you got? I said, two. I said, they both finished graduation. Ah, uh -huh. okay. So, what have you decided? Uh, see that you don't send them for working. Let them do masters. I said, yes, one of my daughters, she wants to do masters. And see that you don't allow her to do it in India. Send her to US. I said, that's exactly what I'm thinking. And he said, that's exactly what I want to tell you. I want to sponsor your daughter. And then he said, how many you got? I said, two. Can you call up the other one and ask her where she wants to go? And she said, I want to go to Australia. So one daughter went to US, one daughter went to Australia. 120 lakhs he deposited in the account. How much is 120 lakhs in dollars? Sorry? 240,000? Give me the right amount. 240,000 dollars was deposited for my daughter's education. Uh, y'all are not even clapping because y'all, I, I understand, I understand because it did not come into your account. I understand. I understand. Now tell me to earn $240,000 will take you how long? $261,000. Now, now, I will give you the formula how to receive see there are people who sow but yet they don't receive did you hear yes. i will give you the formula when i come next time <laughs> hallelujah can we learn it next time no. i know when it comes to money we will not allow you to go <laughs> i know okay listen to the formula first thing did jesus say I have come to serve and not to be served. Yes. So how many of you want to serve Jesus? Hello, how many of you want to serve Jesus? Listen, if you are saying to Jesus, I have come to serve you, he is saying, you are imperfect and with your imperfection, you can't serve the perfect one. You know the good news about Jesus, he is the king of kings, but he is saying, I am a king who is a servant of all my people. So, the king takes the place of a servant and serves us and de delivers us from all our trouble. So, can you serve him or he serves you? Agreed? Now, just the way he serves you, now you are also saying, I am a servant by choice and not by force. How many of us like a title of a servant? <laughs> I should ask your spouse. <laughs> so the first thing you got to make a decision, I want to be a servant by choice. Now, as long as any person is breathing oxygen, whether you like it or not, whoever you are, you have to serve somebody. So you can serve somebody by choice and you can serve somebody by force. Which one do you prefer? Choice. Really? <laughs> so when I understood that in the kingdom of heaven, if you want to rise higher, you got to be a servant. In the kingdom of the world, if you want to rise higher, you make everybody your servant. Now did Jesus live as a servant or did he make his disciples his servant? So what are you going to do in your everyday life? Be a servant or make everybody your servant? Be a servant. Uh, hey, talk man. I, I'm teaching you how to receive. Come on, let's talk. Okay, second thing. When you are a servant by choice, you will always be promoted by somebody whom you have served before. You will be promoted in your life by somebody whom you have served before. 
Joseph served the butler. The butler promoted him and in used his influence to take Joseph to the palace. But Joseph was serving Potiphar, who was the bodyguard of the king. But the bodyguard did not take him to the palace. So you never know which person around you has God chosen to take you to your palace. So you never know and that's why every person around you is so very important to take you to the next level of your promotion. And the third thing is the quality of your service decides the timing of your promotion. So when you're serving somebody, what is the quality of your life? I never knew when I was serving this man that I was teaching him the word that changed his life from alcohol, from sleeping pills, from depression, name it, everything. I never knew. And there were no charges. But a day came when he came back to tell me that God put in his heart to sponsor my children. When you work for a company, I work for the Most High. You also use your 24 hours for a company and in exchange they give you dollars. I also work for the highest authority and he is the source of all dollars. When you reach 60, they will say all the juice is gone, retired. But in my company, you don't get retired till your last breath. And your juice never runs dry. You are full of sap, fresh and green, bearing fruit even in old age. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I work for the highest authority. And I use his tools to solve people's problem. And when I solve their problem, they come back blessed after a few years to solve my problem. So the assignment that God has for my life, I don't have the resources. But the resources that I need to finish my assignment is with somebody close to me. And the only way to get this assignment or to get these resources to finish the job is to pass the test. A relationship with somebody is a gift of God. It is an excess, A-double-C-E-S-S, -S -S, excess with somebody. It's a gift of God. And in this excess, in this relationship, there is always going to be a test. And those who pass the test are the ones who receive the resources that they need to finish their assignment. How many people in your life God has chosen you with their resources to take you on your purpose and finish the assignment. But for small little things, the devil used offense and bitterness and jealousy and envy or something or the other that you with your own choice destroyed that relationship. God had chosen David to protect Saul and his family. But Saul was filled with jealousy and he went against the very person God had chosen for him. And that jealousy separated David from Saul and the end of Saul was that he ended up committing suicide which was not God's plan. It was David who was supposed to be there to protect him every day. How many times are we allowing our flesh to fight against one another in our relationships? Your relationship is a gift of God. And that relationship will take you to your palace. And you don't even know who is that person. But the, you will discover that person taking you to your palace when you pass the test of love. There's always going to be a test in relationship. And when you pass the test and the day the harvest comes, there are tears rolling down and saying, God, I never knew it. Hallelujah. Last night I went and stayed in somebody's house. Let me tell you, the stay was free. The room was double the size. 
and I thought I should roll from this side of the bed to that side. <laughs> And I was pleading to them, I don't need this. And they were pleading to me, today night, please. I got good food, good stay, everything, absolutely zero money. Because years back, the preaching of the gospel had set the girl, the wife, free from brain tumor. The word of God had disappeared those tumors from her brain. And I did not even know after years I would get a free stay. If I see my life, I've seen it again and again and again and again. Everywhere I go, there are people who blesses me are the ones when they were in trouble, God used me to bless them and teach them the ways of the Lord. And when their problem got sorted out, ha, things change. I met another lady whom... I had gone to a house some years back and, and I taught the word and she said, you know what? From the day you preached to me, I went on the YouTube and I studied the word of God. That doesn't mean I don't have problems. That doesn't mean there are no opposition. But what I want to say is I have become fearless when I face those trials. I have learned to be an overcomer. And you don't know how much you have changed my life by preaching the word. And she said, next time you come to Melbourne, you're coming to my place to preach the word. Believe me, when I leave my house, till the time I go all around the world and I come back, I don't need to open my purse anyway. What Jesus said, don't carry anything, it's free. It's really free. And this has been happening for the last 26 years. The best of the food... Now I've told them you don't give me the best because this became over best. <laughs> Hallelujah. So I'm controlling them, holding hands and saying, I don't want that food. I want to live simple. Amen. Amen. So are you a problem solver or a problem creator? <laughs> are you a person who is stretching your neck that somebody will come and solve my problem? You will never be able to receive. The way to receive is an opportunity to search for somebody in problem and go after them and solve their problem by teaching them the truth. Just because you planted the seed and just you gave the seed and you didn't go out to take opportunity to solve somebody's problem, you are still not receiving. Is it helping you in any way? Yes. Should I continue? Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So from now on, are you going to give the best quality? Or the leftover. When I get the mic, I don't want to leave the mic because I want to solve everybody's problem. If you ask me what do you do every day, whatever tools I got, whatever things I got, I'll use it to use the tools to educate you with the teachings, with the truth that God has taught me in these 26 years and give it to you free. So that when your problem gets sorted out, you have the resources that I need, not for myself, but for the kingdom of heaven. Hallelujah. So write down. What's the last line you wrote? Receive the opportunity to solve a problem joyfully. Joyfully. Not grumbling. So the next time you see somebody in problem, be or grumble and if somebody is coming against you get ready because God has released a great blessing in your life and all he wants you to do is the devil wants you to do is get offended imagine brother Linus he called me for that breakfast for 15 minutes and it was going live and we were arguing live and those who heard said how dare he? brother can talk to him like this and we from Melbourne how, why should we keep quiet <laughs> but it was a heated uh, uh, conversation and at the end I told him those who want to go to work they can go to work and come back in the afternoon and night and watch it and believe it's still live but I'm not going to stop. He could have said, hey, brother, you're on my platform. 
if you are on your platform you can say that and the same thing happened in canada session also myra also called me for 15 minutes please never call me for 15 20 minutes but our relationship is not broken and i said and it was every once a week and i said myra why we have once a week i can come every day praise god and there there are times when it is off off see uh, my my timings are changing all the time but i will see to it somehow make it to that canada session how many of you have been hearing the canada session and i want to tell you the canada session is completely completely different from all the sessions you know why because in canada session i can take one topic even for 15 days now if i start here i will by by now wes linus thank god is not to be seen and as long as not to be seen the class continues praise god <laughs> hallelujah but when it comes to online we can go on the same topic for 10 days 15 days 20 days no problem and that's why you get the beautiful juice please go please go to the youtube type play uh, go to the playlist and find canada teachings and get on to those teachings your life will completely change it's entirely different hallelujah okay right on satan will always attack satan will always attack satan will always attack those those next in line of for promotion satan will always attack those next in line for promotion how quickly somebody called linus he came back see <laughs> nothing brother no nothing nothing <laughs> you were not talking about you brother <laughs> adversary demonic activity adversary adversary demonic activity around you demonic activity around you is evidence is evidence that heaven that heaven has dispatched that heaven has dispatched a miracle your way now do you feel <laughs> the next time you see for no reason something coming against you it is already dispatched from heaven a great miracle and one of the example is that um, daniel is praying for people's conversion and as soon as he started to pray the angel gabriel comes and meets him and gives him the message and tells him daniel god has answered your prayer the next time daniel is praying this time for fasting one day is gone the angel gabriel cannot be seen one week is gone is not yet come two weeks are gone is not yet come daniel is still fasting not yet given up three weeks are over and after 21 days the angel gabriel comes and david uh, and daniel is surprised the last time i opened my mouth and you came so quickly what took you 21 days and gabriel says there was a battle in the spirit realm and i was stopped until i call archangel saint michael to take over the fight and he is on the fight and i have come to give you the message but daniel the day you opened your mouth and ans- and and put that petition before god your prayer was answered but i have come after 21 days to give you the message because of the war in the spirit realm so remember the miracle has already been released from heaven and it is not yet manifested in your life but the proof that god has released is for no reason there is opposition there's persecution there's all kinds of bad things happening around you it is a news that you got to be excited that it has been released from heaven amen 
Amen. I can write down in capital letters, please. I can only be promoted. I can only be promoted. I can only be promoted after I have overcome. Please underline that. After I have overcome. So from now on, are you going to allow your senses to rule over your life? You are a loser. But for no reason, the enemy is going to come and strike you. He's going to play on your emotions and feelings. But if you understand, the reason all these things are happening is, I must overcome and pass the test. Can you touch your neighbor and tell your neighbor, please pass the test. What is your enemy saying? What is your enemy saying? Pray for me and keep me in prayer. <laughs> hey, hey, listen. If your, if, your, if your neighbor is saying, keep me in prayer, you tell him, even the world prays for you, and you don't pass the test, you are still messed up. One of the biggest bondages, you can go around and tell everybody, keep me in prayer, and believe that you are in prayer. But you don't pass the test. Okay, let me show you, pass the test. Go to Philippians chapter 1. Now, now, now Paul, St. Paul is in the prison, and the people outside, there are people outside who are preaching the gospel. And he says, some indeed preach Christ, even of envy and strife, and some also of goodwill. The one preach Christ of contention, not sincerely, supposing to add affliction to my bonds. So there are some people who hated Paul. And when Paul is in the prison, they purposely want to go and preach, so that the, Paul in the prison will be tortured even more. But the other out of love, knowing that I am set for the defense of the gospel. Praise God. So there are two sets of people. They, one is preaching the gospel so that they will torture Paul even more. And the others are preaching the gospel out of love. And what is Paul saying? What then notwithstanding every way, whether in pretense, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached and therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. Now Paul is saying, I don't care if somebody is preaching out of love, somebody is preaching out of enmity, somebody is preaching out of jealousy, but praise God, as long as the gospel is preached, I shall rejoice in the Lord. So I don't care whether a Protestant is preaching, Pentecostal is preaching, a Muslim is preaching, a Hindu is preaching, a Brahmin is preaching, as long as Christ is preached, I shall rejoice. And many a times a person will ask, the person preaching, is he a Catholic? Is he a Protestant? Is he a Pentecostal? The word of God is the same. The New Testament is the same. Some of them did not like it, Lord. What do I do? Read that 18th verse again. What then notwithstanding, every way, every way, whether in pretense or in truth, Christ is preached. And therein do rejoice, yea, and will rejoice. For I know... Everybody's eyes fixed on verse number 19. For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through your prayer and the supply of the Spirit of Jesus Christ. So when you pray for somebody, the Spirit of Jesus Christ and your prayers will work for somebody and that somebody will be delivered. Yeah? Hey, look at the screen, don't look at me. Can we all read it together? For I know that this shall turn to my salvation through... Can you give me some other translation, please? What does it matter? Just that Christ is proclaimed in every way whether out of false motive or true, and in that I rejoice, yes, 
and I will continue to rejoice then for I know that through your that through your that through your that through your and the help of the spirit of Jesus Christ this will turn out for my deliverance so will your prayers and the spirit of Jesus Christ deliver a person let's say you told somebody to pray let's say you told me to pray okay and i am praying for you and the spirit of jesus christ will surely deliver you right yes. now when i am praying you are saying no all right when somebody else i said was bringing you said yeah hello when you ask somebody to pray for you okay so that person's prayer and the spirit of jesus christ will surely deliver you right yes. no, no. no? Only when you rejoice. So, how many people do you find in affliction are rejoicing? When something unjust happens to them, they are crying. And nowhere in the Bible did Jesus say, "Go, your tears have healed you." And if there was one line over there, "Go, your tears have healed you," every woman would have got healed. <laughs> He never said that. He said, "You are rejoicing." and other people's prayer and the spirit of jesus will deliver you so do we have rejoicing in times of affliction or sitting and grumbling sitting and getting worried or is it now that you put some beautiful every praise to our god every word of worship to our god every praise every praise to our god <laughs> you see where where ricardo i'm coming very soon i'm coming very soon hallelujah whether i sing in tune or not but when you sing from your heart you are dancing and rejoicing before the battle result can come because you already know that my dancing and my rejoicing and people's prayer for me is working for me and my dancing and my praising is drawing the spirit of Jesus Christ to bring deliverance for me so how many of you are dancing when you get the bad news <laughs> because when you do that your season has not only changed brother ricardo you missed the beautiful voice of mine sorry you heard it from a distance it was very different from here <laughs> hallelujah can we sing that every praise to our god every praise every praise to our god sing hallelujah sing hallelujah to our god glory hallelujah can put like this hymns and dance like a mad person and when you are dancing remember and every time you are lifting your leg and putting it down every demon is getting crushed under your feet but it's it's all depending on what you believe listen is it's all depending on what you believe when you're clapping you clap in such a way that you are believing between the two hands the demons are getting crushed <laughs> when brother linus is not there so good no no nothing brother i never told you hallelujah so write down you can only be promoted after you have overcome an enemy an enemy is also an enemy and not that and Can 
you can only be promoted after you have overcome after you have overcome an enemy is also as important as a friend do you like to be around friends but if you don't have enemies what happens you become lazy because your friends will only make you comfortable but when an enemy shows up everything starts becoming uncomfortable praise god uh, do you remember when when jesus rose from the dead and jesus went up to heaven all the apostles and all of them were in jerusalem and they were in jerusalem and suddenly they heard that saul is coming hey when they heard saul is coming what happened to everybody they ran in different directions and as they ran they went around preaching the gospel and Saul coming into Jerusalem spread the gospel to the ends of the earth there has to be an enemy please write on an enemy is necessary an enemy is necessary for my future example example David was a shepherd boy David was a shepherd boy looking after his father's sheep But when he was anointed to be the king his father sent him as a delivery boy taking some sandwiches for his brothers and there he was introduced to goliath everybody in israel everybody in israel were filled with fear looking at goliath but david yeah filled with fear were filled with fear but David saw it as an opportunity to fight Goliath. He saw it as an opportunity to fight Goliath. And David spoke the covenant language asking everyone what will he get what will he get if he kills goliath and david recalled his past god given victories and said and said god help me to kill the lion and the bear to kill the lion and the bear and now the same god is going to help me to kill goliath and david moved by faith David ran towards Goliath
and the slingshot hit Goliath on his forehead. And Goliath fell on his face. And Goliath fell on his face. David took Goliath's sword and chopped off his neck. That very moment, David's profession changed. All these years, his life was with sheep and their manure. Manure shit, shit. <laughs> I gave a easy word you did not understand, then put a shit. <laughs> The sheep shit. <laughs> His position changed from sheep and shit and he got into the army to protect Saul and became a commander. So when you fight, yeah, so when you fight and destroy the enemy, you are promoted From the most low, you are promoted from the most low to the most high. People who don't want to fight, they stay with the manure and the sheep all their life. And people who are ready to go in for a fight of faith, they have changed their position from sheep and manure to a position of a warrior in the kingdom of God. What happened? No, come, come, come. You are talking about Goliath? Just as Goliath. Just as Goliath, yeah. So, so she has come to talk to us how uh, she got victory from sheep manure to big position in the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. She got so excited that she said, I'm not sitting anymore. I can't keep my mouth shut. I have to go and tell what the Lord has done to kill that Goliath. Amen. Hi, my name's Peter Reen, and I'm here to speak about my daughter, Shireen. She's here and she's just getting dressed for the moment. You'll see her later. Two years ago, Shireen was in Frankston Hospital. She was there for some procedure. And then she was sitting on a chair waiting for the medication to be given her. She was uh, 31 years old and she just fell off the chair. They don't know if it was a stroke, a heart attack or a fit. Um, she became unconscious. She was swallowing her own um, spew. And so her lungs were getting blocked. Lucky she was in the hospital. Uh, uh, no such thing as luck. She was blessed to be in the hospital. <laughs> I know, luck is from Lucifer, right? Mm. It was know. God's grace. God's grace, she was in hospital. Not luck. No, absolutely not. So they rushed her from the um, department she was in straight to the emergency department. Now this child, she died. She's actually intellectually disabled, so I still call her a child. I guess your kids are always called your children, doesn't matter how old they are. So she was unconscious, she was, could not breathe, her lungs were blocked, she was without oxygen to her brain for over 20 minutes. Now any medical people will know that after five minutes of no oxygen to your brain, you'll, you'll declare brain dead. After 10 minutes, you're physically dead. But these um, emergency people kept working on her. They gave her three bouts of CPR, they did four big bouts of defibrillation. So they were working on her and working on her. They kept going way past the 10 minutes. After 24 minutes, she started to breathe again. 
So that was wow. certainly God. Yeah. Wow. Such a miracle. So, so maximum a person can be for, for 10 minutes. 10 minutes. And then After that, the body, body is physically right. dead. Yeah. That's but in her case, it was going on going for 24 through. minutes. These people kept defibrillating, CPR in her. What, what's that? CP. Um, CPR. 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 Resuscitation. Coronary. Means coronary what? Resuscitation. They're oh. pushing, they're pumping, they're, they're, and the defibrillating is the electric and, and what about uh, electric, electric shock? shock. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So everything was happening, and they, they could have stopped after. They told me. They told my. Minutes, they, they told my. Stopped. They told my wife also. Your husband <laughs> is uncontrollable. We need to give him some electric shock. <laughs> really? Because I, I, I would become like an animal, and in a matter of ten minutes, destroy everything with my hands. Mm. Uh, hit on the mirror, on the windows, and start destroying things in 10 minutes. I would become like an animal. Mm. And the next moment, I would shift to a very lamp-like person. So I had a shift of identity. Right. Yeah. But this defibrillator... Now, when you said about the current... Yeah, that helps to start your heart. Yeah, yeah. Because your heart... But that was not for the heart. That was to start my brain, brain to yeah, get it on yeah. the right side. Yeah. So this, nothing was working, but then after 24 minutes, she started to breathe again. She was still not out of danger. She still could have died. She was on life support, so was not, she was in an induced coma for three and a half days. You said coma? Induced coma. So they kept her unconscious. They just kept her vital signs going with these machines. For three and a half days, I kept thinking how much that is like Jesus in the tomb for three and a half days. And we didn't know she would leave or she would die. And it was very, very touch and go. My husband and I had just had to have that conversation. What if she, if they turned off the machine, this is the girl walking in the door now. Uh, please, please, please. Come, come. Um, yeah, we had to have that conversation. What if they turned the machines off and she is really brain dead? And come, she's come, come. In a vegetative state. She couldn't feed herself. What if she's in a wheelchair? What if she's blind? What if she can't hear? What sort of state of life or quality of life would you have? Please come. Um, yeah, and after three and a half days, they ran us from the hospital. We, she was in hospital, we were at home, and they said, would you like to speak to your daughter? And we thought something was wrong with this person asking us, would we speak to someone in an induced coma? You cannot speak to someone in that state. But sure enough, God had woken her up. I must say, the night before we had had a prayer meeting, Brother Johnson joined us. He was in India, and we had hundreds of people all around the world praying for this young lady. And the next day she woke up, and her first question when she came out of the coma was, Mum, have you got my mobile phone? <laughs> so her, her brain... Her brain was functioning beautifully. And then the next question was, but you don't have a passcode. So we didn't have to worry about brain problems, about speech, about you know, cognitive abilities. So God brought her out absolutely miraculously. So thank you to Brother John. <laughs> Yeah, and Shireen got baptized last Sunday. Now, it was Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand for that. Two years to the day that God brought her out of her coma. So that was just a beautiful miracle. Praise God. Can I have a photo with you now? Sorry? Photo. She wants a photo. Yeah, you can have a photo. Quick. Say you can see Brother something. Johnson. Pray for Brother Johnson for helping me get back from the coma and for life. Amen. Uh, it's the Lord who did it. Praise God. And, and, I'm, now, and I'm now doing a Jesus journey. Jesus journey course. Now, now she's doing course. the Jesus journey course. Praise God. And uh, can we stretch a hand towards her? And, and, and today we learned when we rejoice and our prayer and the spirit of Jesus will work wonders in our life. Amen. Amen. Hey, mom, are you ready? Amen. Father in heaven, we thank you. A name? Sharin. Lord, we thank you for this precious child, Sharin. Lord, she went through terrible times in her life, but she is not a mistake. You have sent her on this planet Earth on a purpose. And as we stretch our hands towards her, Lord, we speak 
your blessings upon her your anointing upon her lord we do not look at the things that are seen but we look at her a mighty warrior being trained and father we thank you that your anointing is taking her from glory to glory from faith to faith and what our eyes have not seen what our ears have not heard what has not even entered our hearts those things you have prepared for her because she loves you and you have called her and chosen her on purpose on an assignment and we thank you as she goes through this jesus journey course lord she has encountered you jesus and now she is led by your spirit and not by her thoughts a carnal thoughts but by your spirit thank you and praise you for this in the glorious name of jesus Amen and amen and amen. She wants to take my photo. She needs a photo. She wants to take my photo. Yeah. Okay. Another one. And one, this one also. God bless you. Thank you, darling. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.